Welcome to Color Me Home, a podcast about paint and decorating and home improvement and creative projects and pretty much whatever else comes up in the conversation. I'm Dan. And I'm Betsy. Thanks for tuning in. Now, last time we talked about some preliminary things to think about when getting ready to decorate or design a kid's room. We talked about the importance of bringing your kids into the project and getting their input. And then, of course, we discussed how to take their input and use it without letting them completely overrun your tastes and plans. Right. Now, today, we're going to move from decorating concepts to actual projects, the fun stuff. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Now, all right, the first thing we want to talk about today is kids' artwork. You know, the paper and crayon kind, because there's nearly an unending supply of this stuff, literally. You know, kids can crank these things out. They crank out three, four, five little pieces of artwork every few minutes. They hardly have to take any time at all to do it. They're like little factories. Right. Just constantly cranking this stuff out. And and they think all of it is museum quality. It is. Didn't you get the memo? That's what, yeah, that's what they tell me. All of it needs to be saved. Right. So is there a way? a creative way to tap into this seemingly bottomless well of inspiration and creativity and then put it to use in their own room. Of course there is, because we wouldn't be asking that if there wasn't. Of course not. No. No. So why not take their own artwork and frame it and use it on the walls of their room instead of having it all over the refrigerator like wallpaper? Use it in their own room. There are a number of great benefits to doing this. First off, it's a great way... First off, it's a great. I <laughs> it's a great way. You got this, Betsy. Last it's a great. It. It's a great way to do stuff. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> You're going to have to land on your feet. Nope. <laughs> you hit the diving board on the way down, but you got to somehow pull this out. <sighs> okay, I can do this. You were at. It's a great way. <laughs> Okay. First off, it's a great way to bring in vibrant colors, interesting mixes, patterns, and textures without overpowering the room or losing control of your theme. There are so many creative directions you can take to this. Here are just a few of our very favorites. Now, the first one we want to talk about is empty frames. With no artwork at all. Right. Just empty. Just empty. And you just paint them different sizes, different styles possibly different colors. You can get them for, you know, 50 cents, a dollar a piece at, you know, Goodwill, thrift stores, Mm -hmm. you know, take whatever's in it out, throw it away, keep the frame, repaint it. And then those little screw eye things that you can buy, screw those into the sides of the frame, the inside edges, straight across, string a string across and use clothespins or any other kind of clips. They have decorative clips at the craft stores now that you can clip up the artwork. That way it looks like it's always framed and you can change it out really easily. So a, when they come up with something new and great and it's, you know, the new <laughs> Every thing, five minutes. Exactly. <laughs> then it's their own artwork and it's something to be proud of for them. Hanging on the wall. Just clip it right onto that wire. Right. And you're good to go. Yeah. It's really cool. It creates, a, like you said, a framed look. It's whimsical. It's fun. Right. And yet, uh, the biggest thing is you can swap these things out really fast. Right. Gives them a place to put them. So a year from now, when their drawing has suddenly gone from stick people to, well, kind of blobby looking they people. They always make us look fat. <laughs> they do. <laughs> the kids draw. I mean, it's fun to watch how the drawings progress. It always starts with this big circle. Right. And, oh, it has so annoyed my wife. But most of the time, and, right. and this is... I don't know how to continue with this discussion, (laughs) but really they'll draw us and I'm always really tiny. Like I'm a big (laughs) circle on the ground and I've got legs and then the tufts of hair sticking out and then like little sticks. And little tiny arms. Yes. Little tiny arms. T-Rex arms. (laughs) T-Rex arms. And then my wife, I'm sorry, babe, but she's enormous. You know, (laughs) she, sorry, the kids, she's not really enormous. Just in the drawings, in the drawings, maybe... She towers over me. She's the powerful one. I guess so. They're picking up on that. So as the kids progress, I start to get a little taller. My wife definitely shrinks down and becomes more normal size. So it's fun to watch the progression. I have no idea how I got there, but I did. So let's just move right on. (laughs) So another idea, one idea is to use the empty frames, like Betsy was talking about. Another cool idea is very similar, same concept. You basically just take frames, and instead of the 
or, or you, not necessarily instead of the backer, but you can buy cork board yep. and glue it right onto the backer or whatever you got to do. But you fill that backer area with cork board. Right. Hang that on the wall. Paint the frames whatever colors you want, different sizes, different shapes again. Yep. Stagger them however you place them. And now you've got cork, cork board back there, and you just use that. Rather than pinning the artwork to a wire, now you're just yep. pinning it there with right. pins, which... Think about that, people, before you give all your small children. <laughs> yes. This is definitely for a little smarter or older crowd. I yeah. shouldn't say smarter because they don't there necessarily are, get smarter as they get older. There are some brilliant little kids <laughs> out there. And there are some really dumb old ones. Exactly. I've got a couple. They're not dumb. They just sometimes make some crazy oh, decisions. Oh, I thought you were talking about yourself. I made some really dumb decisions when <laughs> okay. I was that age. So, yeah, right. definitely. Okay, so the next thing that you could do is use clipboards, like the kind that we go around and take inventory on all the time. Some of us, some of us just sit at our desk and wait for the day to end. Yeah, must we be nice We don't know who those you. people are. It's not me. Oh, sure. Sometimes it's me. Yeah. Let's be honest here. Okay, so this is an even easier thing to do than the other ones. They're just regular clipboards. You can buy them in different colors, or you can get the plain brown ones that are really cheap at the office supply store. You can paint them or leave them brown, whichever you prefer. Hang those up on the wall, and then just use those to clip up the artwork. It's another great way to hang artwork. Plus, it's really easy, especially for little kids. Really easy to just pull that clip back, stick something new under there, no frame to it, but it puts it up on the wall. Right. It's very cool. And like you said, it's easy for them. They can pull the clipboards right down because they're really just hanging on a right. a nail on the wall or whatever. Right. Easy to pull it down, do whatever they want, put it back up. Exactly. Just a cool way for them to display their stuff. Right. Now, in all these projects, you can keep your wall color simple, white, neutrals, that kind of thing, and let the color come from the artwork and the frames. Or you can do the opposite of that. Make the frames white and bring in your color in the wall behind it. So maybe a red wall or a blue wall or something like that. The options are really unlimited with these things. Right. And best of all, your kids are going to feel a sense of pride because it's their artwork, their drawings, their creativity that's bringing color and interest to the room. It's a cool project. Right. Now that we've decided what to do with all of those masterpieces made by your kids, let's shift to our next topic and talk about one of the coolest paints out there, Benjamin Moore's chalkboard paint. Now, for so long, chalkboard paint was only available in green and black. That's it. How boring. Now you can get Benjamin Moore's chalkboard paint in any Benjamin Moore color. Red, pink, purple, yellow, green, any color you want. Whatever you want, whatever works for your room. This opens up so many creative projects. You're really only limited to your own creativity. Right. Benjamin Moore's chalkboard paint is very versatile. However, before we jump into this, I just want to say that some of the projects out there for chalkboard paints are, you know, in my opinion, Betsy doesn't completely agree. Oh, no. Here we go. But I think... I think some of these projects are kind of dumb. Not the ones we're going to talk about. Of course But if not. you look around on the internet, some of the projects you're going to find are kind of dumb. Right. They're impractical. Now, I think the product can be remarkably overused. For example, I saw a kitchen, as I was making notes for this, where uh -huh. they painted every single cupboard, every door, all with black chalkboard paint. So it's got a bad look on it anyway. Because it's black. It's black. And, right. and the whole thing and is flat. very dark and flat. And then they've written everything over all the doors, where, where everything is. Right. Pans. There's, a, there's another drawer that's labeled, you know, dishes. Wait. No, wait. Just now, a hold minute. Hold on, though. Ugh. Because th then they've got silverware. My point is, unless mm -hmm. these people are renting this house to new people every single day, and that you need to know where everything is. Mm -hmm. If you live there and you can't remember after three or four <laughs> days where you keep the silverware, <laughs> should you be using the knives? Should you even be using Wait, any of this so, stuff? When I was a little kid and learning how to read and write and spell things, my mom went through with index cards and labeled every single thing in our house. Okay. Kitchen cupboards, everything with what was in there so that it would help me learn to spell and things like and that. And make dinner. Yeah. Maybe that was her evil master plan. Probably. Oh, so so there is only some I had known. value to it, I guess. That's, right. That's note cards for children, though. This was a kitchen for adults. Yeah, I'm sure of it. The black is a little 
flat black, you know, if they had even painted it a color, it might maybe, have been maybe. marginally okay. St- I still think. If I can't remember the silverware unless I read which drawer it's in, I mean, my goodness. Maybe it's for Although, someone who has dementia. Oh, that, that's true. For now our, you've just for offended. For our friends with dementia, I'm sorry. Yeah. You, know, you can label your kitchen. I'll send you right. free chalkboard paint. Just I need a doctor's note. Yeah. And we'll <laughs> right. get that straight off to right. you. So anyway, there are some, I think, overused uh, uses mm-hmm. or applications for it. But right. in a kid's room, these can be there can be some really cool applications. Right. You know, some unusual creative ways to use chalkboard paint to make a statement in a room like that. We want to go over just a few of them. And the first one we want to talk about is probably the most obvious of them all, and that's just to use it on the wall. Right. But you don't have to necessarily, we're not, you know, you could paint an entire accent wall with chalkboard paint. Yep. And remember, as we're talking about this, we're talking about chalkboard paint that's available in any, any Benjamin Moore color. Right. So don't just think black on the wall or this that funky, yep. you know, ping pong table green, green or whatever on the walls. That's a horrible color. <laughs> it could be any color. Right. So you could paint an accent wall like mm-hmm. that. Or right. you could just paint some shapes on the wall. I've seen different rooms where they painted, you know, overlapping circles and rectangles. Just right. a few of them on the wall in different colors. Yep. Some of these were the same colors. It's just a great, it's a cool way to break up a wall, put a little interest into the room, create a little color, you know, bring in some different colors. And it gives the kids a place, do a little sketching, a little doodling, whatever you want to do. Right. And I've seen other times where they put... Uh, like rectangles on the wall. Again, mm-hmm. maybe different shapes, maybe the same sizes. You know, they can make right. them in a grid yep. or stagger them around. But then they had, basically they drew in or they penciled in or not penciled, they chalked. Chalked in. <laughs> <laughs> Used chalk since it's chalkboard paint, which, you know, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> right. But they drew little frames around it and the kids yeah. drew within the frames. Yep. You know, and made little artwork, you right. know, like a little gallery around Have the room. Have you seen... It's out there everywhere. Someone took a wall and they just put tape all over it, mostly in triangle shapes, but it's all overlapping. They're all okay. interconnected. And I think the point is to paint each of these triangles, you know, a different color or mm-hmm. select ones. It'd be cool to do that same thing, but have a chalkboard one here yeah, and there I'll... so that you're mixing in it, it in with your regular paint. It's a very cool project, a great use, because you could write things on there. And, you know, not let right. the kids change that up, put it high out of their reach right. or put it low where they can yep. mix it up all they want. Right. So one one idea would be, you know, just paint some geometric shapes on the wall. Another idea, um, again, pretty basic, pretty obvious here, but instead of a border around the room, I've seen a couple of rooms where they've done a chalkboard paint yeah. border around the room. Right. And I've seen some that are at kids level, mm-hmm. you know, where they basically doodle all around it or whatever. It's right. it's great. You Instead do... of a big, long sheet of paper, you have yeah. a big, long chalkboard. Right, where they can do all of whatever they want to do, you know, homework, notes, whatever they want. Right. It's just a cool application. I've seen some where they just take one wall and put a yep. color there. I've seen other ones where they take, you know, a, a wall and they tape off sections and they put different colors. So right. you, you still get the impression of a border, you know, right. different colors repeating throughout the room in a pattern. But it's still chalkboard paint. Right. I've seen other ones. I saw, one of my favorites was a pink nursery where they did black chalkboard paint. Yeah. Up along, you know, maybe a foot, foot and a half down from the ceiling. Okay. And then they penciled or penciled. Let's really? Use chalk. <laughs> <laughs> the pencil doesn't erase as easily no. from chalkboard. It doesn't paint. show up very well either. No, it, it doesn't unless you're writing no. in, in, you know, colored pencils. Maybe. Maybe. Let's just stick to chalk. It works better. It's what it's <laughs> yeah. made for. They chalked in. Different sayings. I think that one was from Winnie the Pooh, Yeah, that book. Right. And um, just it was very cool. Out of the kid's reach. Right. So once it's done, it's done. It, it And then the parents would mix it up from time to time. Right. That's another cool option. Yeah. It's a good way to be able to change things up when you get sick of what's on there. Mm-hmm. So this other thing I found is one of my favorites. It's so cool. There's a picture of where they've chalked what do you call it a cityscape yep cityscape they've painted it all black so it's a big black outline we're going back to the black chalkboard paint can you believe it so they do the cityscape and then the kids can draw in the details of the houses and the buildings and things like that we'll put a picture of it in the show notes because it's maybe hard to describe maybe you can't visualize it so we'll show you a picture but that is a really cool way 
to have something instead of just, you know, squares or shapes exactly. or whatever. It's something different. If you're feeling a little more creative and yet the skills involved to pull something like that off, it's not as much as you would think. They're basically just rectangles for skyscrapers. Right. You know, houses, the shapes yep. of that. And you could do different colors. Like you had mentioned when you talked about this, you know, you could yeah. make the backdrop the a black color. city and then a houses in the forefront could be a brighter color. Right. Make the yep. sky a a blue periwinkle. You can make the house darker. blue because that is almost because that everybody's is... favorite. Right. It should be. Right. My house was blue and I love that house. Yeah, we know. Yeah. We've been over I've this. talked about it. Multiple times. Not everybody. Times. There's every now and then a new listener and I just oh. want to make the plug. <laughs> make the plug to go back and listen to the go other episodes. To, yeah, go back to the first to episode. To hear all about Dan's blue house. Yeah, that first episode we talked about my blue house and uh -huh. the walking dead. That's yeah. all I'll say, but you'll have to go there and listen to it. <laughs> Right. So that cityscape is a really cool thing. You also right. mentioned, you know, even the shape of a tree or even, you know. Yeah, there was one It was, I don't even know, it was quite a bit taller than the little girl who was chalking on it, if you will. But it was the outline of a tree. Was it taller than me if I were chalking on it? Probably. Probably. <laughs> Maybe the little especially, girl could lift me up. Especially if your strong. kids had drawn you. Yeah, and you they were, draw me you know, as a little bowling ball. <laughs> That's what I look like, a little bowling ball, and it looks like my wife's going bowling. She treats me well. I don't know why they draw her as such a diabolical huh. monster. Because they see her as so great. That's probably what it is. Mm -hmm. And they see the fear in my eyes sometimes. Right, exactly. exactly. That must be it. Okay, so, that was so a cool moving project. on. <laughs> moving on to the next area of chalkboard ideas do your furniture or the kids' furniture. Maybe not your <laughs> furniture. So you don't want me to paint my couch? Chalkboard <laughs> paint. No. Nope. No, big no. Okay. Probably not. Okay. Probably so not a good let's idea. Let's clarify what you're talking yes. about. So kids' furniture. Now, you could do the bed, but that seems a little pointless. The headboard of the bed. Yeah, you could do that. But, you know, quite often there's not a whole lot of space to actually do anything on it once you've painted it. So why not do a table? Chairs, things like that that go in the room. Like when you say table, are you talking the actual tabletop or the I'm whole thinking thing? you could do the whole thing. It's kind of boring that way. So if you just do the tabletop and then bright colored legs mm -hmm. in a regular paint for the legs and possibly the border that goes around mm -hmm. it, that could be really cool. Adds a little bit of color to the room and gives them a surface to draw on. I saw one little boy who had the black top. And I don't know what color the legs were, maybe green or something. And he had drawn a little road on it, and he was running his matchbox cars on it. I thought Pretty that cool. was a brilliant idea. Very what cool. What a smart little kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them are. Uh -huh. Most of them are. They're right. all smart in their right. own way. Exactly. Yeah. So the, you also talked about using that same tabletop idea for games. You know, I saw yeah. one where they were actually, you know, they had a game going, and they were using that to keep score. Right. On the game, you talked about just tic tac toe, which I think Dan's is Dan's least oh, favorite that game. game. Drives me nuts. There's never a winner, right? And then if they if they win, if you let them win, so the game can finally end, then they think you're dumb because you you couldn't even <laughs> beat your kid at tic tac toe. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, hate oh, tic tac toe, but you could play tic tac right. toe or and hangman. It, Hangman's you could fun, do hangman. The game that would be cool. Not the reality. Yeah, that would be really cool. And if you do things like this, remember that you want to do the chalkboard paint and then in regular paint do the outline of the tic-tac-toe board or the little hangman, whatever that thing is. Not the, a noose. What is that called? I don't know. The gibbet? I don't That's know. That's fun to say. <laughs> gibbet. I gibbet, certainly gibbet, gibbet. Oh, You sound like a frog. I did. Um, I certainly hope you're using that in the right way. We'll have to look that up before we air this part. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I remember hearing that at church. <laughs> I think that makes it all right. Ah, uh, sure. G I B. My voice broke. Someday I'll grow up. <laughs> That's why I love talking about kids' rooms. Because <laughs> you are one. When, when I'm talking at the table, my voice will break three or four different times during a meal, and the kids and, always laugh, and right. they always say, "Dad, someday, and someday so your growth you're... spurt, puberty, all of these things will kick in, and you'll right. be a real man." And so your boys just feel great. They feel about adequate. themselves. Yes, they feel better about uh -huh. themselves. Yeah. But you would put these whatevers, the, the, the right. framework for the tic-tac-toe or right. for the hangman board in regular paint so it can't be erased. Right. That would be your point. Exactly. Yep. If you want to hard code 
tic-tac-toe onto right. the table, which is not advised. Right. According to Dan. <laughs> for my table, no. Right. So that was a great one. Yes. You had also talked about this weird chair Okay, idea. when I say chairs, I don't mean the entire chair. I mean... Because they would sit on it and it would rub off on yeah. them. And this would be back to my dumb ideas. Not my dumb ideas. Mm, Let's clarify. Sure. Other people's dumb ideas about ways to use chalkboard paint. Right. Don't use it in ways that it's going to rub no. off and make horrible messes. No. You're talking about the back of the I'm chair. I'm talking about the back of the chair. And not the back where their back is on it. I'm talking about the very back of the chair where clothes aren't going to be touching it or anything like mm-hmm. that. So... Paint the chair a fun color, and then do just that little back panel on the back side of the chair. And what would you write on that? If you had a chair, if you, if you had a... Okay, let's let's play a game. Mm-hmm. If you had an office, if you were awesome enough at RepcoLite to actually have an office like some of us do... Oh, honey, the world <laughs> is my office. <laughs> oh, okay. So in your office <laughs> of the world, if you had a chair with chalkboard paint on the back, what would you put on that chair? Awesome. Oh, really? That's That would be it? Would you draw little stars and stuff? No. No, just awesome. Planets. Would you write it in lowercase or uppercase? A mixture. Okay. okay. I like to be creative. And I... it would be flowy, not block letters. Okay, see, I would just stare at the blank space for a while trying to think of something perfect, and then I'd just get pulled into something else to do, and I'd never, <laughs> ever get it coded. Uh-huh. So. All right. I was just curious. That's why my chair is going to say awesome. (laughs) Can we get one of those in this recording studio for me? We'll we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll hang my coat over it. Yeah. Yeah. So what else? Now, another idea that I've seen, I'm going to let you talk about a little bit because I want you to talk about the um, the chalk markers, which is awesome. Yes. But I first want to say that there's this project that I've seen and I'm sure everybody listening who's even remotely considered using chalkboard paint. You've all seen this. It's a dresser. With all the stuff labeled, you know, right. underpants go here and socks go here. Right. And then the kids put those on all different spots anyway. Right. But but the it looks cool. You right. Know, so the, the faces of the drawers are all painted with chalkboard paint. Yep. Most of the ones that I've seen are the black or the charcoal, the slate right. color. But yeah. again, you could stretch Any way color. beyond that. But the drawers are all labeled and it's really cool. Right. But the thing I've hated, absolutely hated about it, is that I imagine it to be an incredible mess. Yep. But then Betsy told me about something that I had no idea even existed. (laughs) And it's like the holy grail when it comes to chalkboard paints. Right. Take it away, Betsy. There are these awesome things. Now, I was in the same position. I made some tags for organizing around the store. And chalk, when you're trying to fit it in a really small area, is really hard to write with because it just it's too big and bulky. And it smears. So where I was going to put these tags, people were going to smear it. You weren't going to be able to read Completely pointless at that point. So I thought, well, I know that there are places that I've been for dinner, whatever, and they have nice chalkboards and they have these brilliant colors of what appeared to be chalk. And I thought it was chalk, you know, but it was so smooth. Then I was turned on to chalk markers. Okay. Greatest invention ever. Basically. Really? Wait a minute. It is. Greatest invention ever. It is. The the electric light. Take a back seat, Edison. Exactly. (laughs) We have chalk markers. We have chalk markers. (laughs) Cool. This is so much better. So much better. So much, yeah, just So why are they so much better? You get- Sell us on this. You get more vibrant colors, which is great. You know, it's not just white. It's not, you know, kind of powdery and gross looking. They're really clean and they dry and you can wipe over them. So you can and brush right no, over them yep. and they don't. And they don't come off. A little bit off. of water and a rag will take it right off. But if you run your finger over it, nothing's going to come off, which is fantastic. No smearing and good color. And again, it's so smooth when you look at it. It doesn't have all those bumpy ridges like normal chalkboard writing Are they does. expensive? Not really. You can buy them online for really cheap uh, they might sell them in office supply stores, but I'm not positive. Chalk markers. Chalk markers. We'll find a link and put something in the show notes. I think not we, necessarily a link to buy them. I think them. mine were called Chalktastic or something like that. Just Chalktastic. Yeah. That's I think so that. fun. I chose We should the make paint with ones. those last names. <laughs> Carefree Tastic paint. Yeah. It's just fun to use. You open the can, it's like a party just happened right now. 
right. Mm -hmm. Does so, glitter come out and it balloons probably come floating Clouds out? show up at your house. <laughs> it's awesome. Awesome. It's it's the whole experience. But the right. chalkboard paint mark or the chalk markers. Right. To me, that made a project like this make sense because right. now you could put it on there. It's not going to rub off the first time. Yep. You know they touch the drawer, or whatever. And again, this right. you know not to go back too far, but the, your tabletop. Right. I could do my um, tic tac toe. Yeah. In that framework same thing. in that it wouldn't erase as quickly right. as the regular and then chalk. You'd and have then to use regular, regular chalk, chalk for, for, the, for the game itself. Right. But then I'm not locked into having to play tic tac toe every night. Uh huh. So the chalk markers definitely right. a way to make some of these projects make right. a lot more sense. Yep. Do you have anything else you wanted to say about that dresser? I kind of jumped in there. No, I don't think so. I it's just, just I a, covered it. You're not. It's a good way later. to help little kids who are learning to read, who are learning to help you organize their stuff. So this stuff. is back you to want... your idea about the putting everything, the little tags, and and they can read. Right. Well, and it's right knives on the drawer that has the <laughs> knives in it, so they yes. know which drawer that is. Yes. Don't well, open that drawer. You can doodle. You know, these are your pants. These are your shirts. I mean, you can draw a picture to go with the words, so that it's they very learn the cool. association. And then it, you know, gets them excited about helping to put things away because they know where it goes. You know, it's very clear to them what goes in what drawer. See, so, you know, I know where everything goes. And you still I don't do it, huh? putting things. I do it, but I don't enjoy it. Mm. It's not like a party. Maybe it will be a party for the children if, yeah. the, if there's drawings on the table. The... Well, if you make it exciting for them, I then try. they'll be excited. They see through it right away. They see the tears. I can see why. Behind. Yeah, I know. I'm not Because very good. with that voice, you are <laughs> terrible at convincing are, people. Are you of this. making fun of my, what do you mean, my voice? I'm are talking. Are you criticizing, like you're I am. making personal attacks? I am. I'm pretty sure you personally attacked me earlier. I don't think so. You Maybe. probably did. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a threat. <laughs> so, any other furniture? Let's just move on before, you know. Right. Before this gets Betsy, violent. Yeah, yeah, before the fists start flying. <laughs> right. Was there any more furniture? I mean, really, it could just be stretched it to almost be anything. anything. Yep. Writing desks. Um, you really got to just be creative here. Right. That's the, the really cool thing right. about chalkboard paint is how versatile it is. And like I said, when you start Googling around and looking at all these different things you can do, there's so many ideas. Not all of them right. are great. No, <laughs> But there not are plenty all of, them. of them. Well, and if you have one of those tweens, as they like to call them, do the wall behind their bed. I saw this and I thought it was really cool. Paint the wall behind their bed with chalkboard paint. And then the girl took the chalk markers and basically graffitied the wall. You know, wrote whatever on there. That way it doesn't wrote smear off. some things on the wall, though. Yes. yes. Well, they were just single words. Oh, little... And it was little doodles, basically. But that's a good way to make it their own. And it's kind of hip and modern, you know, without actually being the graffiti thing that sometimes is popular. Mm -hmm. Kind of comes and goes. but. Yeah good idea now you did a jar that you were hauling around yeah what are you going to put in that jar well first explain what the jar is and then i'm very curious what's going to go in the jar the jar is kind of like a canning jar um picked it up for 50 cents at a thrift store had a horrible i don't even know border or something right through the very center of it i'm sure everyone some kind has of seen printed them. image yeah. or whatever around with colors or yep. whatever okay i primed just that strip around the center painted it with chalkboard paint and i, I so don't now you've know you've got a clear glass jar with this strip around the middle right. of chalkboard paint we'll put pictures in the show notes yeah. it's pretty cool you could put craft supplies for kids in it you know and then you could write craft markers. supplies wouldn't that right. make sense i'm thinking with pencil well if my dog didn't already have <laughs> <laughs> your yeah, dog can't pencil. read betsy i know but what's I would, that gonna help him? i would write dog treats on it okay then if children come over, they'll know what, what's in there. But right. the dog Don't won't eat know. These. That's right. Just dog in case. <laughs> so that's a cool project. Yes. Um, another one that I thought was really cool real quick was um, a bunch of blocks that either the parents made, just wooden blocks. Right. Cut them into shapes, you know, some rectangular things. You know, they were maybe six to eight inches high. Yep. Looked like they made them honestly out of two by fours and then did a lot of sanding. Could be. Rounded the Ooh. edges. Everything was, you mm -hmm. know, smooth. But basically they look like a cityscape, kind of like what you described on the walls. Mm-hmm. But they had all these different blocks, painted right. them all, the faces of them with chalkboard paint. Yep. And then the kids used them as toys. They would sketch, you know, the details of the houses or the buildings right. or whatever, scatter them around, move their little cars through them. Yep. Or they could also sit on a shelf as decor. Right. You know, just a really cool project. We'll put some links in the show notes. 
So the chalkboard paint from Benjamin Moore is available in the perfect color for your creative project. It's a great thing to try out. What can you do with it? We'd love to know. If you come up with a great project, something unique, something interesting, something imminently awesome, let us know. You can reach us at colormehome at repcolite.com. All right. That's all there's time for today. We hope the projects that we talked about really got you thinking. And most of all, we hope that they convinced you that when it comes to decorating a child's bedroom or a playroom, you can really stretch your creativity to its limits. Now, next time, we're going to focus on an idea that works really well in kids' rooms, but also anywhere else in your home, creative storage solutions. See, I'm a little, just a little, just a little little OCD, and I really like storage solutions. So do I. I'll admit. In an unhealthy way. I really like them. Well, that's why I did the jar and the tags, because... I like it organized. Just don't know what to even put in it. I'm just so happy to have things right. to put or, or something to put things yes, into. I know. We're going to talk about that next time. It should yes. be a lot of fun. Yes. And don't forget, if you have any questions or even suggestions for topics for Dan and I, then be sure to drop us a note. The email address is colormehome at repcolite.com. Send us a question or a suggestion topic. And if we use it on an episode, We'll send you a gift certificate for a free gallon of paint at any Repco Light Paints, Port City Paints, or Snyder Paints. It's like getting anywhere from $40 to $60 for sending an email. Who doesn't want that? We're paying you to send an email. <laughs> and we're paying really well. Right. I have never been paid to send an email. so Me neither. Somebody send us an email. We Please. already had one we have person. One, but I'd sure love more than one. Right. More than one is always better than just one. Yes, Anyway, exactly. you can find all of our past episodes at RepcoLite.com. Just click the Color Me Home link on the homepage, and then you can subscribe to our podcast via RSS feed or iTunes. Yay. Subscribe today, and you're never going to miss another episode. Until next time, thanks, thanks for, for listening. listening. You've been listening to Color Me Home, brought to you by Repco Light Paints. Everything discussed in this episode can be found in our show notes at RepcoLite.com. Just click the Color me home tab on the home page if you have any comments questions or feedback you can contact betsy and dan by email the address is color me home at repcolite.com that's color me home at repcolite.com